we have a motor. We switch. We're now going from having something where we have a mechanical uh, energy creating electrical energy. Instead, for our motor, what we have is we have current passing through a wire, and then that is creating mechanical energy. So we're converting now electric energy into mechanical energy. So in our motor, we have our loop. Our loop is going to initially look be oriented like this. We're going to have our magnetic field. And this is our initial position for our loop. This will be the top view. The front view would look like this. We still have a constant magnetic field, which is going to be to the right. And it will just look like this. Front view, all we're going to see in the front view is this side of the wire. This being a motor, we're going to pass current through this wire. This is an electric motor. We're going to pass current through this wire in order to get it to turn. So we're going to call that current I0. This is the direction of the current we're going to pass through this loop in order to cause it to turn. So, in our front view, on the wire on the left, what is the direction, Loki, of the current? Into the board. So our current on the left is into the board. Our current on the right, Loki, is going to be out of board in our front view. Okay, because we have current in the board, in the front view, point our fingers in the direction of the current, curl our fingers in the direction of the magnetic field, and there is a force down on this wire. Magnetic force, yeah. yeah. You could do the same thing on the wire on the right. The current is coming out. The magnetic field is to your right. The magnetic force is going to be up. In other words, remember in our motor, we're converting electrical energy into mechanical energy. We're putting current through this wire to cause it to turn. And the whole loop is going to turn this way. We're going to have torque on the loop. We're just going to talk about what happens when it moves through 90 degrees. It would just keep moving because we'd have the commutator and stuff like that, but um, we're not going to worry about that right now. We're just going to talk about what happens when it moves through um, 90 degrees. So this is our initial. Now, we've determined that it rotates this direction. So we're going to turn it 90 degrees. So in our final position, it's going to be oriented like this. Right? We'll turn 90 degrees. So now it's going to be oriented like this in our final position. If we look at it here, it's just going to look like this in our final position. But we also need to look at it from a side view. Side view, initially. So top view, front view, side view. Top, front, side. So when we look at it from a side view, we're going to see, uh, let's start with this. What is the direction of the magnetic field in our side view? If we're looking at it from this side. Out of the board. Out of the board, okay? Because it, will be, it was going this way, so it's going to be out of the board. So 
in our side view, the magnetic field is out of the board. And all we see is a wire that looks like that. Finally, in our side view, again, the magnetic field is out of the board. Now, we've turned. So in the top view, we look like this. In the front view, we look like this. In the side view, it looks like that. We need the direction of the current. So we know the direction of the current in the, let's see, we turn this way. So the direction of the current here is out of the page into the page here. So then what is, if I turn, what is the direction of the current in, for example, the top wire? Right here. Counterclockwise. Okay, let's watch this. Top view, front view, side view. We know, but we've, we've turned. So we're turning, so it looks like this. In the this one, it was coming out of the board, right? So if I turn it, it's going to the left. So in the top wire, this current is going to the left, which means in the bottom wire, the current's going to the right. Now remember, this is the current we have put through the wire in order to cause the wire, this, this loop, to turn. Okay. What is the initial magnetic flux through the loop? Class zero. zero. What is happening to that flux? Now, the magnetic flux is, Vlad, walk me through it. Right, little dots being out. Right. So the magnetic flux is out of the board. And what's happening to it? Is it increasing or decreasing? Uh, it's going to be increasing. Okay, it's out of the board and increasing. Therefore, what happens? Power up. Uh, there's a induced magnetic field into the board. Well, let's just start there. Okay. So because we've gone from no magnetic flux to a magnetic flux which is out of the board and increasing, we have, according to Lenz's law and the concept of electromagnetic inertia, the resistance to that change in the magnetic flux. So we have an induced magnetic flux which is into the board. And what is the direction then of the induced current? Magnet. If the induced magnetic field is into the board, okay, if you take your fingers, point your fingers in the direction of the induced magnetic field, that current, that induced current is going to be counterclockwise. I'm sorry, clockwise. Notice the induced current is opposite the direction of the current we put into the loop to cause it to turn. Remember. I naught was the current from the motor. The I induced, the current induced, is induced from the loop turning in the magnetic field. This concept is called back EMF. <laughs> so, again, to make sure we understand what's going on here, 
this is a current that is in the circuit opposite from the direction of the current we put into it because of the motion of the loop in the magnetic field. Bless you. So, we have people in here who've used power tools before with large motors in them. When you turn on a table saw in your house, what happens? I agree with that. But something happens in the house. The lights dim. Because when you turn on that table saw, is the motor turning? When you first turn it on? No. So when you first turn on the motor, there is no back EMF. So that circuit is drawing more current than it's designed to. It's designed to only really draw the amount of current it's designed to draw when the motor is running. The same thing happens if you're using a heavy tool like this with a large motor and it gets stuck. Anybody do this one? Where you're using it and suddenly the blade gets stuck. I've done it. And you've tripped the circuit breaker in your house. Because suddenly, because that motor is not turning, it no longer has the back EMF. So the concept of the back EMF. So when you start up a motor, there is no induced EMF. Again, why when you start up the motor is there no induced EMF, no back EMF? Miller. Why not? I agree with that, but why not? Uh, because it's not turning. Because it's not turning. It's the turning of the loop that causes it. So um, after time, the back EMF reduces the total current. 